Hey everyone and welcome back to another aquarium video. In today's video we're going to rescape this 90 gallon behind me. Now to get it to this point I had to do a few things. I redid the stand which I'll show you guys later on in the video. I also resealed the aquarium. Now when I did that I had to take all of the media out of the filter and I put it into my sump under my other aquarium and all of the sand I put into a bucket with an air stone and some tank water to keep the beneficial bacteria in the sand alive the best I could. And I also scrubbed all of the driftwood to remove algae and the smaller pieces of Malaysian driftwood, I boiled those and they are no doubt clear of algae, but I'm noticing that it's starting to grow back on these larger pieces of driftwood. So I'm definitely gonna boil those before we start to scape this, but all in all, this is ready to go to scape. You know, there's, there's nothing else to do with it. All we gotta do is get that driftwood in check and then we'll do a big water change and add the plants. Now, on the topic of the plants, in this box here, I have a shipment of plants from H2O Plants. I have all the links for him down in the description and I'll leave a link at the end of the video, but I got some pretty cool things in here, so let's open it up. We've done a lot of unboxings on this channel so far, but I'm probably most excited about this one here. And you'll see why in just a moment, because I've got some pretty interesting plants in here. As always in the colder months here, we've got everything wrapped up in some of this thermal wrap. So we'll take everything out of here. As with most of these orders, I vaguely remember what's in here. Like I, I have a general idea of what's in here, but I need to actually see everything again to know what I've got. I'm gonna open these all up and then we'll take a closer look at all of them. We'll start over here. What I've got are two Anubius wrinkle leaves and they'll get about the size that this one is now. They might get a little bit larger, but they're are a medium size growing Anubias. They don't get huge, but they're not definitely not small either. So two Anubius wrinkle leaf. And here is an Anubius golden coin, which looks similar to the wrinkle leaf, but the leaves are more rounded and some of them will even get a yellowish golden color as they grow in, hence the name golden coin. Here we've got an Anubius hostifolia, and I really like this one because it has arrow shaped leaves as it really matures and it's a much larger growing Anubius, growing about two feet, two feet tall at least. It'll probably get a little bit taller than that. The thing with this though is I've heard mixed things. I've heard that it has to grow out of water if it's grown submerged for a certain amount of time, it will just die off. Other people say that it's fine. So we'll see what happens with it. It may die off. It may thrive. Well, I don't know. We just have to see what happens with this one. Then down here, we've got 18 Anubius Nana Petites, and these are just for accents in the plant, but they will look really cool against some of these larger plants to add a little bit of uh, contrast and texture and whatnot. Here I've got a large java fern. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it in as a single plant or if I'll break it up into more plants. I kind of like having just a single huge java fern like this, but we'll see what happens as I start to get into this scape here. And finally onto the largest Anubius here, we've got one, two, three, four and five Anubius Lancelota, and these get pretty large. I can't remember exactly how tall they get by comparison to these, but I believe that they're slightly smaller than the Hostifolia. And then over here we have the Anubius Heterophylla. We've got three of these, and of the three, this one grows the largest, um, probably no larger than you see it now. I mean, maybe slightly, but this is, pretty close to its full adult size from what I understand, but uh, we'll likely get a little bit of die off when these plants go in there, but I think that they're gonna look really sweet. And as you can see, the theme with all the plants here is that it's mainly Anubius. And originally I was gonna go with an Anubius only scape, but then I was like, yeah, uh, I like Java fern. Why don't we get some of that as well? And I also have like five gallons of Java moss and I'm debating on whether or not I'll put some of that into the scape as well. I kind of don't think I will, but we'll see what happens as I start to get into this. So what I'm gonna do is just 
put all of these into the tank and we'll go from there. So first things first, I gotta get these troublesome pieces of driftwood out of here and I'm not sure, yeah, they, they float a little bit, but I'm gonna take this one out. And as I said, I gotta boil these to kill off that algae. From here, what I want to do is just put the plants in here. I have some things that I got to do right now, so I can't escape the tank right now. That's not a big deal, but typically I would wash all these plants off and put them in a separate thing for a couple of days just to monitor them. I don't have anywhere else big enough to put any of these plants, so I'm just going to throw them straight in this aquarium and then we'll deal with them at a later time. I forgot that I also have some Aponagentin Bovivianus that I got for this aquarium, so I'm gonna put these in here as well. So now we officially got all the plants in here, and I got some stuff I gotta do right now, so we're gonna resume the video in just a moment. From here, what we're gonna do is we'll take all of the driftwood out of here, and we're gonna set it on this table over here so that way it can dry out, and we'll glue some plants on it later on with super glue. Then after that, we're gonna drain some water down into this bucket and into this container to put the plants in, so that way they're separate from the aquarium. And then, as we drain the aquarium, we're gonna do a little gravel vac, and we'll drain it all the way down to the sand, and from that point, we'll start scaping. So, let's, let's do the prep work. Now the tank is completely drained and what I'm going to do is just clean off this glass a little bit so that we can see into here better. But after that I'm going to do a few preliminary hardscapes. So I'll completely hardscape the tank, take a photo of it, hardscape it again, take another photo and I'll probably do that about four, four or five times somewhere in that range just to really perfect the hardscape because that's pretty much going to define the entire tank. And there are a few different looks that I want to try with this that I think could really make it look cool. So I'm going to start cleaning off the glass and then we'll hardscape. So I'll give you a rundown real quick of the hardscape materials that I have. I've got three pieces of Malaysian driftwood. I've had these things for, oh, I don't know, a good 11 years. They've seen various different types of aquariums and they're seeing another one. Here I've got three other pieces of driftwood. Unfortunately, I don't know what kind of wood this is. Whoever sold it to me said that it came out of the Ohio River, so I don't know. It's some kind of driftwood from there and it it's relatively hard and it sort of matches the Malaysian Driftwood when it's underwater. So I think we should be able to create a cool aesthetic with all of those. And then over here I have some white stones. I'm not sure exactly what type of stone it is, but it will look cool against the black sand to make a nice contrast. And I uh, don't have too many of them to work with, but we should be able to come up with something nice with all of this.
So now that I'm set on escape, I have to go back in here and uh, <laughs> try to do my best to recreate it. It's going to be easier said than done though, because a few of those logs are not waterlogged. So I have this slate rock here and I'm just going to put it in the center and we will tie all the logs onto that or the ones that won't sink at least will tie onto here so that way they are sunk. So I finally got this thing all set up pretty much close to how it was before. Now everything's going to probably shift a little bit as I fill it up just because uh, the, the logs aren't waterlogged so they'll kind of tilt a little bit. I tried to anticipate that as I escaped. I'm like, okay, we'll probably lift up a little bit here and a little bit there. They're partially waterlogged. They're not going to just like <laughs> float up and make it look all weird, but they will move around a little bit. So I'm going to fill this up with water now and we'll move on to the larger plants. Now we've got it all filled up with water. I got my filter running again, and obviously it's a little cloudy right now. It's just the filter's gotta run for a little bit and clear things up. I got it really close to how, how it looked initially. I mean, there's probably some differences, but it's pretty close, and as you can see, the logs kind of floating around and whatnot. It really didn't affect it that much. I was able to plan for that the best I could. Now, if I actually like come in here and touch the logs, they do move around a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, it, it still looks pretty good. So overall, definitely liking it. Uh, I'm gonna add some plants right now. I'm not gonna do it all right now. I'm gonna probably add some and then we'll kind of get a good look at it and then we'll have to drain it later on to add the smaller plants. So let's get into it. So here we are about a week later of this thing being set up and overall I definitely like how it looks. It's pretty close to how I envisioned it. However, I think it's just got to grow in a lot for me to really be satisfied with it. There's some empty spaces and different things like that but I had planned around that because the way that the plants will grow and everything in time it will all sort of fill in and mostly be in the center here. And I wanted it that way as opposed to having something here and something here. Some of those other layouts that you saw because I feel like the fish will be less inclined to create territories this way or that they'll kind of like branch out and so sort of to create the most amount of open space possible while also having a nice scape. 
Overall, the plants are doing fairly well. However, the Anubius heterophylla is having a little bit of melt back and no doubt this thing was grown out of water. I would be really surprised if it was grown underwater, but when things are grown out of water and you put them in an aquarium, they kind of have this acclimation period and probably, hopefully not all of it melts back, but I have a high expectation that a lot of it will melt back. So hopefully we don't lose too much of it. It's not going to affect the fish at all and we'll just have to wait for a little while for the scape to get back up to speed with that growing in but it would I guess it would kind of even it out since this stuff's not growing in over here but in time the entire back here from you know ed edge of log to edge of log that's going to all be filled in and then up front here all this Anubius will fill in as well so it's 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 getting there just give it some time but let's stock it with the fish Here's the plan for moving the fish. I'm gonna take all of the decorations out of here, put them into this bucket, and that'll make it easier for me to then net the fish and put them directly into the new tank. Now, I'm not gonna bother acclimating the fish to that tank's parameters because they're virtually the same as this tank's parameters. So the fish can go from this tank to that tank with no issues whatsoever. So let's start moving the fish. So we've had these guys in here now for about 20 minutes and everyone acclimated quite well. They're definitely liking it or it appears to be that way. And after I got a better look at how large they were, I think they are large enough to go with my other green sunfish now. And he's with my tropical fish now. So when I get him, I'm actually gonna have to float acclimate him because the temperature is significantly warmer in there. It is about 78 degrees and then in here it's around probably 73 so it's quite a difference so we'll put him in a bag and float him for a little while and i'm not going to show you me getting him out of that tank because i haven't released it yet so i'll just get him in the bag and we'll float him in here all right so we've got tim here and it's a pretty nice looking fish fairly large maybe about half grown and uh we're just gonna dip him in here and let him get acclimated. At this point, Tim's been floating for a good half hour or so. He's definitely ready to go in here. I'm sure that the temperature is up to speed, so let's uh, just dump him out of this bag here. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda nervous about this. Even though I am confident that he will do fine with the other fish, I'm still definitely nervous about it because he is pretty large.
And I think we'll conclude there. I should say that the move went really well with all the fish, they acclimated quite well and there's no issues whatsoever with Tim being so much larger than all of the other fish. I will say though that since there's more hiding places, the catfish are hiding out most of the time now which is kind of upsetting because they were pretty personable before but you'll have that whenever you move fish from a bare bottom tank into something like this. I should also say a special thanks to Justin at H2O Plants. He hooked me up with all these plants and it would not have been possible without that so I greatly appreciate it and as I said all links are down in the description for him and then I'll leave a link up at the end of the video so as always I appreciate you guys and I thank you for watching if you like the video take the second to give it a thumbs up it's greatly appreciated and I've got more aquarium content coming up in the future as well as all my other typical content like terrariums and art and whatnot so I'll see you guys next time and peace